Hi there everyone, I'm Jenny Kirk. Welcome along to another video. It's really great to have your company. And today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders to fit every conceivable locomotive. And I'm going to be telling you a bit more about them later on. But today's video is going to be a review of a locomotive from the 2019 range from Hornby. And actually this is on offer at the moment from uh, Rails of Sheffield and Hatton's Model Railways as well. And we're going to put a link down below to both of those. You can take your pick, whichever you prefer. Uh, and it's just a remarkably good value for money for a sound fitted locomotive. So without further ado, Let's take a look. Well, this is the model from Hornby. It came out in their 2019 range, so still in the shops. But um, as I said in the introduction, both Rails and Hattons have these on offer. So we're going to put some links down below. So whichever's your preference to pick this up at the price of £139.50 at the moment, which is actually amazing value for money for a DCC sound fitted loco. Now it's got the Hornby TTS sound chip in. But as I've said before, I think the TTS sound chips offer amazing value for money. Uh, even if you buy them separately, they only generally cost around £36, £38 each. And that is really great for a sound chip but this locomotive comes with it ready fitted so just showing you on the end there it's catalog number r3603 tts they are late crest lord nelson class and this actually is lord nelson number 3850 and uh, of course they're with sound now the actual prototype locomotive does still exist. It's part of the national collection, hence the branding on the box of Railway Museum. So actually, this locomotive is perfectly good, not just for anybody who wants to model the uh, British Rail period, but actually the locomotive is still about York Railway Museum. So you can, you know, justify running this in more modern surroundings. Now, you do, of course, get in the box all the leaflets and stuff, and in there is a full guide to what all of the functions that the TTS sound chip does. It's all provided for you in there. So I'm just going to get it all out of the packaging, and you can see there, I actually get quite an extensive pack of extra bits and pieces. Now, looking in here, we've got some fire irons just to uh, decorate the top of the tender. But there's also the brake rigging to put in there. We've got some drain cocks. Only fit these if you've either got very, very slight curves on your layout, say if it's an end-to-end, -end, or if this is going to be living in a display cabinet. Then we've got a vacuum hose, uh, a couple of steps, again, if um, you don't have tight curves. And uh, also there's a coupling in here to fit into the front NEM pocket if you want to be able to couple up to the front of this locomotive. And actually I only tend to fit that front coupling uh, in extreme cases. You might want to run this backwards and that's absolutely fine. But actually in reality, uh, these locomotives tend to just get turned either on a turning triangle or on a turntable, so running uh, smoke box first was the usual order of the day. So I probably won't end up fitting that on this particular model. And you can see as I've got it out of the box there, it's a pretty imposing locomotive. It's new tooling from Hornby, and they do do a number of different identities, ranging from Southern Railway livery through early and late BR crests in the lined green. And um, it does mean that there's, there's one really to suit uh, any period that you model that these are applicable to. Now, the locomotive prototype, which 
Lord Nelson was, was actually a development of the King Arthur class. In 1926, uh, Mansell was needing to design a more powerful locomotive, the idea being that it could move a 500 tonne train at an average speed of 55 miles an hour. And he did that by altering some of the, uh, the crank settings to give uh, eight chuffs, eight power uh, strokes per cycle. And um, it actually made for pretty much one of the most powerful uh, locomotives of its time and indeed the Southern Railway did play on that. It's one of the reasons I guess why this ended up being uh, reserved for the National Collection. In terms of the model itself the detail on here is pretty impressive and actually I have just noticed that the the coal insert there it is a, a plastic insert you can see it moving around uh, I'm just trying to work out how to get that out. I'm guessing that I'm going to need something like a, a tiny jeweler's screwdriver just to get that out and then underneath here it comes. So underneath you've got the fully modelled uh, coal chute there and actually what's impressive about this is that the prototypes didn't really carry a huge amount of coal. On a lot of other locomotives you do see quite a, a large coal space but what these do have is plenty of space for water so I can only presume that the idea was that they could stop for coal fairly frequently but for whatever reason needed to carry a lot of water. So that's the coal in Insert. and it is actually reasonably well detailed but you can bin this if you so choose and uh, put real coal dust in if that's the way that you want to go um, so there are plenty of options there and it's just my luck that in getting it out uh, it's not really wanting to go back in there we go we got it back in down the side of the tender top there, that's where your fire irons would go if you choose to apply them from the detail pack. But in terms of other detail, we've got the, um, I think they're air tanks on the, the back of the tender. And that's fairly characteristic actually of Southern Railway locomotives. You see that on Battle of Britain class and a number of others too. The rear of the tender, we've got separately applied wire handrails, factory applied uh, vacuum brake there. We've got the coupling hook, uh, sprung buffers, and uh, everything else, the detail is pretty nice and fine. The actual uh, coupling there is a slimline tension lock coupling that is fitted into a NEM pocket. And then the tender actually has a slightly curious arrangement. It's uh, an eight wheel tender, but the front uh, bogey there has an awful lot of lateral movement, but the rear bogey doesn't. There's a small amount of movement but it does feel much more restricted. Now when I've had this running it actually does seem to run really really well and it follows the track well and looks the part. So I can only presume that this design is for a specific reason but it does actually work okay. You can also see there the mesh at the bottom. This is true to all of the different models whether they come sound fitted from the factory or not. The space is in the tender there for the sound chip and for the speaker. It is an 8 pin socket locomotive so if you're going to fit a, a chip to the regular versions of these or you don't want sound it's an 8 pin decoder that you want. Looking further across the tender we've got this kind of um, angled top that's very characteristic of the class and that is well represented there so you really get a sense of the the bulk of these tenders but the accurate side is uh, is on there the lining is sharp it's crisp and it's exactly where it needs to be there's no blurring there's no sign of it being out of true so it really is nicely done and then we've also got our BR ferret and dartboard logo on the back there, the crest, and that is ever so sharp. And actually, I do really like the contrast between the dark green and the light sort of like almost a lemon yellow there. It really does make it look sharp. The bogey sides capture the look of the prototype perfectly there. They had a very much a plate sided affair, very slab sided with all of this rivet detail contrasting with the very smooth welded tops which don't really have a lot of raised detail at all which actually works really well on this. The satin finish of the green just 
works really well and um, it would be very easy for a slab side like this with no rivet detail to look odd but Hornby have got it just right. The steps on the tender are all fully fitted on there as are the ones at the back of the cab. The ones that are in the detail pack apply at the front and the reason that they don't come factory fitted is because on tight track this bogey swings right out and would otherwise foul those steps so it's up to you if you want to fit them. We've got some lovely separately applied pipe detail here, all the injectors are really nicely done. Now the uh, connecting rods and the well shots valve gear is an area that Hornby do especially well. I've always been very impressed by the Hornby connecting rods because they get them ever so fine. And when you compare the Hornby models to uh, any models from another manufacturer that are of the same type of locomotive, then they do look that much finer. Finer. The fluting on there is absolutely perfectly done and when I've had this running the way the Walshutz valve gear goes round just looks so silky smooth and perfect. It really does look the part both stationary and on the move. The driving wheels nicely done with the, uh, the spokes in there. You can see right through to the uh, chassis behind where we have all the representation of the rivet detail that is correct and in the right places. The brake rigging is another thing that's in that detail pack for you to fit. Actually it's not essential because you can't really see it in, under normal running conditions but if you want to it's there. I just want to take a moment out to talk to you about today's sponsor, Trainomatic. They make DCC decoders to fit any locomotive from any manufacturer. They're made by hobbyists for hobbyists, with the intention being that they are so easy to use. Just drop them in and go. There's uh, very little need to mess about with CV settings. These things just do what they say on the tin and work straight out of the box, and I can well recommend them. Visit trainomatic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. The tender drawbar is as is familiar now, permanently coupled front and back. There is an option to be able to slightly closer couple it if you so choose, if for example you don't have tighter curves to contend with. But I do like that. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The fact that Hornby are semi-permanently coupling them like this really does alleviate any risk of causing damage to that cable that goes across to the plug in the tender for the uh, DCC. Um, so it's a really great feature. In terms of pickups, I'm just looking at the uh, the tender and there is actually pickups on these despite the fact that they're bogies. There is a power pickup to every single wheel on the tender and on top of that we've got power pickup to all six driving wheels and I'm just checking in there. No, there is no pickup on the front bogey but this is another area that Hornby are doing particularly well. The front bogey has this uh, pivot in the middle just like the real thing and as we said before in the review of the A4 Pacific and the Princess Coronation class it really does make a huge difference because it follows through the track just like the prototype does and actually the grace that it shows when running is much improved for this prototypical pivot on the front bogey. The rest of the front bogey is really nicely done. It's sprung and has a great deal of vertical movement as well as a horizontal movement and that means that it will follow the track really nicely and you don't end up with that situation where under even the most minor undulations some of the wheels start to leave the track. You don't get that at all with this. The front guard irons are nicely moulded on there exactly where they should be just about lining up with the wheel treads and then you can see on the front we've also got the NEM pocket there waiting for that extra coupling should you want to add it on. The front buffers they're all sprung and then the front face of this locomotive is really really nicely captured behind those smoke deflectors. The earlier version of these models doesn't have smoke deflectors so if you buy one in Southern Railway livery then uh, they come without so Hornby is accurately tooled up for both versions. The boiler is actually quite chunky on this and you can see where a lot of this locomotive's power would have come from in being able to raise a lot of steam quickly. 
And it also has this very big gaping funnel on there, which uh, is um, really quite impressive. And when you look down, I'm just trying to see what I can see down at the bottom. It does seem to go right down in there, and I'm not sure whether there may be a representation of the blast pipe down there, uh, which is really going above and beyond on the detail. It's actually really hard to see. Um, so if there is a representation of a blast pipe down there, then that is amazing kudos to Hornby, because generally speaking, you're not going to see that. Underneath the boiler we have the air gap all the way through just as it should be and again we can see further separately applied detail in the form of the handrails, pipework, other boiler feeds, the name on there is a separate metal nameplate, Lord Nelson, and then we've also got regulated detail picked out in this silver and I think even that too could well be, no it isn't metal but it does look metal, that is pretty nice. The boiler as well, we've got rivet detail, which is perfectly done. All the lining is straight and true and where it should be. At the back of the firebox, we've got, again, more of this, uh, this brass coppery looking pipework. And it really is nicely done and uh, factory applied. The whistles are turned metal. Really nicely done. In fact, they're not whistles. I got told off for this. I think they're the safety valves. The whistle's there at the back, so uh, pay close attention on that. So I'm going to look to the cab as well, and this is another area that Hornby have really been excelling themselves. We've got the full representation of the back of the locomotive, even though that is generally never going to get seen particularly. But when we look inside, we've got a plethora of separately applied pipework, dials, gauges, the regulator, the tampo printing on those dials at the back of the cab there is perfect and I've got little doubt that under close magnification we're going to be able to see the representation of the needle and what's actually around the edge of the dials. We've got a really nice representation in there as well of the firebox door I'm not entirely sure. I think that's a separately applied piece as well. So really Hornby have gone above and beyond on this model. And I can genuinely see this turning into one of their flagship stalwarts of the range. As well, we've got at the very top of the cab a whole series of uh, little control wheels and pipework. It really is exquisite in there. And it's surprising in a way that most of this detail you're never going to see unless you get down and close and personal with it. The cab glazing. It's flush fitted and looking inside there, it's really well done. We don't get any bar of glazing on this model. It is just perfect. And really that is just how I would describe most of this model, just perfect. So to the score for this model, in terms of finish, well, it hasn't put a foot wrong. I'm just looking through here and th there's just nowhere where I can see any fuzziness. The tampo printing on the number on the side of the cab is true. The lining is straight and true and where it should be. And the crest on the tender is absolutely sharp. I'm going to have to give this a good solid 9.8 out of 10. I think, you know, there's just really not a lot to criticise with this at all. In terms of functionality, well, I found that actually this is a really sterling performer. When I was running it, it didn't really put a foot wrong. It did start to slip. It wasn't up to the haulage capacity of some of the big diesels like the 25s, the class 50s, the class 31s. But actually steam locomotives in model form do seem to suffer a little bit for grip. So it handled a train that was probably beyond what most people would put it to before it started slipping. But it's not quite up there with some of Hornby's big diesels like the class 50 and the class 56. So I'm going to give it a 9.2 out of 10 for that. Ease of use, well, it comes factory fitted and everything did just work out of the box. I ran through all the sound functions and, um, you know, they were all there. They're all good. I particularly liked some of the uh, whistle tones. And with the paperwork in the box giving you the full guide to what that chip does, it really is quite easy and accessible. So for ease of use, I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. Aesthetics, I think Hornby have really captured the look of this locomotive pretty much in every way. 
The only things that you could argue is that, you know, the front steps, they're user applied and it doesn't get to go round uh, really steep corners unless you uh, uh, don't put those on. So um, for aesthetics, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. Value for money, well, at the moment, at £139.50 from both Rails and Hatton. So you've got a choice of where to go for this. It really is a sterling price for a sound-fitted locomotive. I don't think you're going to get much better than that uh, for, uh, for a model of this calibre with a fully functional sound chip. So I'm going to give this a 9.9 .9 out of 10 for value for money. So overall, out of 50, I'm giving this model a 48.4. It really is great. And that value for money with the low, low price that it's available for at the moment really does make it excel. But if you really fancy one, do get in quick. At this price, they're sure to sell out quickly. Well, I hope that video has been really informative to you. Don't forget to like this video and share it too. And also subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. And if you want to snag yourself one of these fine models for this great knockdown price, don't forget to check out the links down below to both Rails and Haddens, who both have them on offer at the moment for exactly the same prices. And also you can check out our sponsor as well. We've got some links down there too. But until next time, you take really good care of yourself. This is me, Jenny Kirk, saying bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit trainomatic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, but a special thanks go out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, and Helen Sink. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.